The next one we have here is the Process Capability Database. This is an organized data of different processes and tolerance. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the, the other model here. I'm going to go ahead and just view a few of these tolerances. If I look under the tolerances here, I'm going to open up one. Um, a lot of you have seen and maybe uh, been a little confused on what this link to database actually is. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to talk about here in the next few minutes. If I click on the link to database, we see here we have aluminum machine surface. If I click on this button, uh, the database that I created, uh, just a default one here, we have a bunch of different um, features uh, that we can add. So if I knew that was aluminum machine surface, I can easily just change this to a, um, a steel machine surface. And now it not only updates the name here, but it will update the range as you go. So you can kind of um, just go, th go through, change some of the materials. We have a lot of filters in the database, uh, point, surface, pin, hole, slots. In the database here, let me expand it a little bit. Uh, so there is a lot of information here. We're not going to exactly walk through all of it at this time. But it does give you the name, range, any offsets, uh, random types, sigma number, skewness, kurtosis, and, and more. <clears throat> so in order to build one of these or um, get one of these, oh, again, we also have material filters. We can add to these material filters, and same with the process filters. We This can be added to. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how we import uh, that database. <clears throat> so under 3DCS, we have uh, the data, we have process capability database. This is where we go ahead and just pull the database file location. Um, this at this time here, this is the location. Uh, let me go back one here. Let me grab the the DCS. So we have one here. Um, let me just see if I can open this and show you it in Excel real quick. So this is created in Excel. Let me just expand a few columns, expand a few things, and talk about it a little bit more. <clears throat> So we have our column here. We have some information that reads right into the software, but we have the names and we have the um, tolerances. We have the random numbers, the offsets. All this information is put into here. So I have the capability that I can change a bunch of these um, positions. I can change a bunch. I can save a new database and I can import the new database with the new database, I could go ahead, import this database, go and open. As soon as we choose that, we have this load database and show link info button. Uh, it shows me here which ones are inconsistent and same. I don't have any under my inconsistent. I didn't lose any links and I have some the same. So when I click on this link here to update model, it updated three of them. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now I can open this up. And I did change a little bit here uh, with the range. And the link, again, I could choose one. I could use the database to run different scenarios, um, maybe different plants. They're trying a new uh, position tolerance on a few different plastics. You could have multiple databases and run the simulation to compare so instead of going through and changing 10 tolerances at once, 20 tolerances, or as many as you want, you could change them all at the same time if they are linked. It's also a good way to standardize your tolerances across your different modelers so that everyone's pulling the same tolerances for the same processes. So if you've got five or six different people that are modeling for you, you can make sure that they're all using similar tolerances 
on the same kinds of parts or the same kinds of processes. Right, so we also have people using, you know, they create a, uh, the next model, the next year version. They can just use the last year's database, make a few tweaks to it, you know, based off what they saw in the plant, uh, based off some of the CMM data they've seen. They can make some changes to that database, bring in that new database, and run some results and get some diagnosis. <clears throat> and again, if you have any questions about the process capability database, uh, send us a chat or send us a question. Moving along here, the next tip that we have is the tolerance wizard. Uh, this is, again, uh, an icon, an option in all softwares. Um, in Katia, it's actually a user DLL. Um, in the multi-CAD, there is an actual icon within multi-CAD. So this one is it is a little bit different um, across platforms, but it is available. When I open my user DLL, you may or may not have to add it already here. Um, the the DLL we're looking for is the DCU Tile Wizard. Can be found under your extra DLLs. DCU Tile Wizard. Since I already have it open here, I'm just going to click on it and run function. <clears throat> uh, Simuers case. Um, let me go ahead and once you have the tile wizard, you want to go ahead and pick the tile wizard from the function name. Once I hit that run function, we see a tree here. I'm going to expand this tree a little bit. So this tree, what it does it is, is it mimics your DCS tree. And we have the part. Let me just minimize here a little bit. So we have the parts. We have the features. Now I see under each feature we have the points. And the points are color coded. The color coding here we can talk about in one second. But one thing to point out first is we have the point name. We have MV, which is a move, so this point is in one move. Measure, this point is in zero measures. Uh, we have the GT equals one and the TL zero. So this point is used here in the move and then the GD and T as well. So if I expand that again a little bit more, I can see actually see the move and the GD and T in which this point is located. <clears throat> So just to loop back around real quick, the color coding, you can go ahead and you can hit, um, just to walk through, there's a help button. Uh, sometimes we'll forget what some of it is, so we always have the help button. Uh, just gives you a little description, and let me highlight it here for us. Uh, green, the green identifies that the features tolerance and used in the operations or measures. The red means it's not tolerance, but it is used in the operations or measures. And the yellow, it means it is tolerance, but it's not used in the operations or measures. So we can quickly use this tolerance wizard to identify which points are tolerance, but not in a move or measure. We can also use this tool here to verify that all, all features that are important to moves are tolerance. Uh, so it's a real quick check instead of expanding the tree, going through, doing point information on certain points. Uh, we, we like to use it as a quick reference, uh, just in a color code matter. So we have uh, a few filters here that I can hide tolerance features. Uh, we can hide the not used features. We can hide move tolerance measures. So it is uh, a little customizable and we have a long summary here. Uh, that kind of gives you the same thing, just not in a color code format. So again, the tolerance wizard, color coded format, identifies you know, if the points are used, if they're tolerance, and if you have questions about the colors, again, we do have this help function that identifies it. So this, like the measure generator, is a really good tool to use for validating your model and double checking your work. Because as we all know, when you're going through some of these models, sometimes you forget points or you, you might make a small error or something might not be set up optimally. 
So these are nice validation tools that you can quickly check before running your simulations to verify that your simulation results are going to be accurate. Yep, that's a, that's a good summary there. So now we'll move on to our next tip. The next tip is the MTM info. Um, this tool right here, this tip right here, it's very helpful for debugging moves. So let me go ahead and just show you this. Under 3DCS, MTM, GDNT, we have the MTM info. Uh, click on part one. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the top assembly so I get everything. But you can click on sub assemblies to help identify. This is the MTM information dialog box. I'm going to expand it a little bit. Uh, real quick, you can choose move, tolerance, measure, GDNT. I'm going to go ahead and start with the move. So what this is doing right now is it's listing our 16 moves. If I click on show, show point coordinates, we can see here that move one or whichever move we have selected just below here, it will show the point name, the part, and the actual XYZ coordinate. So we can use this to identify verifying coordinates XYZs are correct. Just click through here real quick. It identifies the point as O1 and T1 in the move as well. Uh, for something like a three-point move, it will just have the O1 through through uh, O3. We also have the show coordinate differences. So what we have here is we have O1, T1 difference, O2, T2, and difference. I can turn off the point coordinates and we see here this move we have no differences so if you're having a problem with the move I've actually kind of tweaked one here to, to show us so visually I have a point I have a part it's not moving correctly now I'm able to use the MTM info to see the difference in point four five and six it's shifting in X by 1.52 uh, 1.524 millimeters so now we can kind of go in, dig, look at the point, see if it, we mistyped a coordinate uh, to see maybe if we even picked the wrong point. <clears throat> so I can go through some of these. We have all zeros. Our points are overlaying each other very nicely. Um, we have one here, another one, difference. We do have some X, Y, and Z. So again, we use this to help debug the model, debug some moves. Uh, if parts are shifting on your move the wrong direction, uh, this is just kind of where we can help. This is where we start um, debugging. We also have the same for tolerances, a little more in depth here. Uh, measures, we can show the current, nominal, and spec limits. So this is a big uh, table used to uh, kind of give you a summary of everything in your model. And again, we also have the summary button here in the corner. Uh, the same summary that is in the move dialog box kind of gives you just some general general information point names xyz's ijk's and more floats move parts <clears throat> so that's what we have uh, a little summary there on our mtm info dialog box just moving along here <clears throat> 